When I ask people how often the cells in our bodies are exchanged, I usually get one of two different answers. Either every seventh year or I don't know. Every seventh year is a common modern myth and I don't know actually captures better the state of the knowledge. Because we have very little knowledge about the exchange rate and turnover of many cell types in the body. It is important to know to what degree the cells in our organs are exchanged, both to understand how they're maintained over time, but also to understand how they can react to injuries. One of the organs where it has been most difficult and controversial to establish to what extent cells are exchanged and renewed is the heart. Different estimates have arrived at uh, either that we're born and die with the same cells, that there's no exchange of cells, or that all of the cells are renewed within a few years. We have used structured cell counting and retrospective birth dating of cells to derive an integrated model of cell generation and turnover in the human heart. We have developed a rather special method to study cell turnover in humans, which we call carbon-14 birth dating. When studying proliferation in animals, we are used to pass chase experiments with BRDU, for instance. Carbon-14 birth dating works in the same way, but we use the carbon isotope carbon-14 instead. And the pass chase timing is not controlled by us as investigators, but by the effect of nuclear bomb tests during the Cold War. The detonations caused a large production of carbon-14 that gave rise to the characteristic changes in the atmosphere, referred to as the bomb curve. The atmospheric carbon-14 exists as carbon dioxide, which is taken up by plants. Then, via the food chain, it's also taken up by humans. Since biological molecules are exchanged with different rates, this will be reflected in their carbon-14 content. DNA is one of the most stable molecules and exchange carbon essentially only during DNA replication. So, whenever a cell divides, this event is recorded in the cell's DNA. The record is then read by accelerator mass spectrometry and subsequently decoded by mathematical modeling. The model we use for cell turnover was introduced already in 1926 but then it was used for predicting epidemic spread and population growth. The main feature of the model is that it's so-called age-structured. This means that not only study subjects have ages, but also cells have ages. This allows us to nicely make use of the carbon-14 data, and here is why. If we know the different ages that the cells have in the population, we also know when they were born. And if we know when they were born, we also know what carbon-14 concentration they took up. So, the real question is, what is the cell age distribution in the population? Naturally, the cell age distribution depends on cell birth and death. When a cell is born or dies, the composition of cell ages in the population changes, and with it, the carbon-14 concentration. By coding this model into mathematical software, we tried a large number of birth and death rates until we found the ones that reproduced the measured carbon-14 in our study subjects. In the current study, we examined heart tissue for more than 50 individuals of different ages. We used theology techniques to determine the number of cardiomyocytes in the left ventricle. We found that the full complement of cardiomyocytes is already set shortly after birth. This means that the heart grows bigger, mainly due to a size increase of individual cardiomyocytes and not due a substantial addition of adult-born heart muscle cells. Already from the second postnatal months, the heart contains a number of myocytes present in adulthood. But how old are adult cardiomyocytes? And can old cardiomyocytes be replaced by young ones? We used flow cytometry to isolate cardiomyocyte nuclei and carbon-14 birth dating to determine their ages. We could show that cardiomyocytes are replaced in all periods of life with the highest turnover rates in very young hearts. The turnover rates decline with aging to less than 1% per year in old hearts. Even during a very long life, only 40% of the cardiomyocytes are replaced. Moreover, 
we could not find any differences in turnover rates in the major subdivisions of the human myocardium. We also looked at other cell types in the human heart, such as endothelial cells and cells of the connective tissue. That we called mesenchymal cells. Both cell types showed substantial higher turnover rates than cardiomyocytes. Endothelial cells reveal the fastest life cycle. Every six years, endothelial cells are completely replaced in the adult heart, where cells of the connective tissue divide at slower rates. We estimated that these cells are exchanged twice during a human lifetime. Dynamics of cell generation. The continuous generation of cardiomyocytes in the heart throughout life, even at high age, points to a regenerative potential in the heart. This suggests that it may be rational and realistic to develop strategies to promote regeneration of heart tissue in humans. Dynamics of cell generation and turnover in the human heart.